Oh, shark, look at the size of it, man. There, that's a, that's a great white, man. That is a seriously big animal, but I'm not that keen on the idea that he's just swimming around us. Yeah, I'm going over her, eh? Ready? You in the water? Yes. Holy f That is f insane! <laughs> that's bigger than us, man. That big that shark, that, that, that's, 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 that's <laughs> longer than our boat, and it's as wide as this. On today's show, the AFN team go head to head in a North versus South challenge. Using the same lure, Knight Webster targets tropical reef fish, while down south, Bill Classen chases southern bluefin tuna. The day has plenty of surprises, including a monstrous and deadly visitor. Micro jigging may sound small in name, but it's becoming hugely popular and for very good reason. It's very, very effective, north to south, bottom of the water to the top, and one of the more versatile techniques you can get your hands around. And right now, there's a little bit of a challenge being set. As we speak, our southern crew headed by Bill Classen are down south, using exactly the same lures to chase one of his favourite pelagics, the southern bluefin tuna. I'm up in the tropics with another challenge. He's backed me out to catch a coral trout in some waters that I love fishing. So I'm here with the medals to go and prove him wrong. Let's get jiggy. There's so many different ways to fish a micro jig. It's really only limited by your imagination. I've got two prime ways. It comes down to how deep the water is as to how I fish it at the moment. I'm fishing up onto a ledge, so I'm in about 20 metres of water. And it's coming up into about 10. I've chosen a 20 gram jig because I know it's going to get me down, not too fast, it'll get me to the bottom, but I'll still have a quite a seductive little flutter on the way down. And I'm casting ahead of the drift of the boat. Once I've hit the water with my jig, I was going to keep that line tight and really watch and just slowly let it get to the bottom. The moment it gets to the bottom, that line will slacken and sometimes you can actually feel the rod lighten up a little bit. That's when I give it a little jig. Now, I don't want to move it too far on the water once it's hit the bottom. It's just a subtle little jig, just to hop it off the bottom and then I quickly wind up that slack line and under a tight line let it go back to bottom just to slow down the descent of the jig and also feel if a fish has come up and eaten it. So many times it's at the top of that jig, a fish will come and whack it. That's how I fish the shallow stuff. I plan on getting out to the deep water a bit later and I'll show you how to fish them there. There is a healthy level of competition between our northern and southern crews. We were out of coral trout season but I thought we've got a shot at going and getting a few coral trout, particularly on micro jigs. We wanted to get a bag limit of trout and hopefully in there, a bigger one just to truly show Bill and the crew down south, we can hold our own up north. Well, I'm always on for a challenge. I reckon I got the short end of the straw on this one. Chasing southern bluefin tuna down south on micro jigs sounds easy, but it's nowhere near as easy as what Nigel's got up north. The only way you can get one of these southern bluefin tuna on your sari jig is to get up early and find the schools quickly. And I knew if I didn't get that hook up early, there was a high chance I was going to miss out and how embarrassing would that be. That's what we wanted. Now this is when micro jigs just come into their own. Look at that fish screen. Now these these bluefin have been really difficult on the troll and every time we get up near them, they've had three days of calm weather, every time we get up next to a school, bang, they go down. So pull out the micro jigs, sneak up on the school, cast in the middle of it, flat line it, then just stop winding. Let that micro jig do what it does best, act like an, a, a wounded bait fish and then on the pickup, and the bluefin's just nailed it. Look at this guy go. And one of the great things about micro jigging is it really is like tackle jigging. It's not really hard on you. You can see that rod is putting a lot of hurt on the fish, but a minimum of hurt on me. And that's because with these parabolic micro jig rods, anywhere between five foot and six foot long, with the parabolic action of the rod, it just pulls that fulcrum right in close to your body. Makes it real easy to fight these fish. And this, 
you can see with that blue fin, solid fish too. I mean, I'd say we're talking a fish here that would be well over 10 kilos. I'm only using 20 pound braid, a 30 pound leader, and little 50 mil Asari jumper fighter with the assist hooks. Because I'm casting it, I put those assist hooks on the bottom end of the jig, so it makes the, makes the micro jig work much, much better on the cast. One of the big part of the challenges is done, I'm hooked up. This is easily gonna be a 30 minute fish on the gear that I've got. The longer the fight goes, the more likely you are to pull the hooks. Get in the reef out here, you never know what's coming up. He battled hard to start with. What is he? Is he our target species? Yes, he is. Oh, don't you love seeing them come on board? Especially early on in the day. I love coming up to these parts to chase what I think is one of our premier sports fish. Great to look at. So aggressive and magnificent on the plate. He scoffed that little jig, it's hopped into his zone, and he would have come out and bashed it. Oh, bigger and better things ahead, I hope. <laughs> By now you're probably curious as to what type of jigs I've got in the tackle box, so I'll give you a quick tour. They're all from the Asari range of jigs, and there's different styles in amongst them. We've got things like the K5 Trends, the Jumper Fighters, the Frankie Jigs, and today I've been using the Lethal Hunter. What you'll find when you look at these jigs is that they're made for versatility. You can change them to adapt whatever style of fishing you're doing, the type of bite, the type of conditions, the type of ground. First thing you'll notice is often they have a lot of different attachment points, and that comes with a lot of different varieties of jigs. And what that does is by attaching it to a different part of the jig, it changes the behaviour of the jig in the water. So you can fish them slower, you can fish them faster. By changing the toe point, you can make it flutter more on the, on the way down, which sometimes attracts the bite. But a key part of micro jigging is to not be afraid of changing your jig to suit the conditions. Quite often they'll come with these assist hooks. You can easily change those and you'll find lots of different styles of assist hooks to, to suit the kind of fishing that you're doing. Feel free to take them off. I sometimes fish with a single hook or put a treble on the back. You can either jig them, you can high speed spin them. That's why they are such a versatile lure. So don't be afraid to experiment. At the end of the day, no two days on the water are the same. And that's why I always carry a box of micro jigs. They're easy to adapt to suit whatever's gonna get thrown your way. Get out there, find your fish, work out how you're best gonna get a lure to them. Choose the right lure, adapt it to suit, and get it down there. I'm driving up and down a likely looking ledge and as I've gone over into some deeper water to start my drift again, I've noticed a whole bucket load of bait and some sizable archers sitting just off this ledge. So I've quickly changed tactics a little bit. I've gone to a heavier jig, put on a 30 gram Asari jig. And what I'm gonna do is try and work my way through those fish just by getting a heavier jig down to them. As you can see, when the fish are about, Sometimes just putting that fluttery little bit of metal in amongst them is all it takes. Once again, the beauty, versatility of micro jigs, quick little lure change up, and you're fishing different depths like that. Not a desirable species, a little trigger, but there's activity. That's where I want that jig to be. Deep water jigging, slightly different. By deep water now, I'm in 35, 40 metres of water. And I like to fish behind the boat or just slightly ahead of the boat in my drift. Whereas I was casting a long way ahead of the boat in the shallow water, this time I just flick the jig five to 10 metres ahead of the drift. And then a lot of the times just fish it out the back and it's really about line management. Letting line come off the spool of the reel and watching it really closely. The moment it slackens off, this bite's there. The moment it slackens off, give it a little jig and then hold it, just let the jig drift in the current. Be surprised how many fish come up and eat it as it's drifting along behind the boat just after you've hopped it up off the bottom. If you don't get a bite for a while, drop it back 
and just keep repeating that. Just keep repeating that jig. Oh, come on. That jigging motion up and down. There's a nice fish. That's a great way to cover ground. And it's very, very effective. It's trouty in colour. Oh yeah, lovely. So from the shallows to the deep, just a case of change of approach, change of retrieve style, change of lure. Fish to where you see fish in your sounder. And you can be having a whole ball of fun. Tasty fun. We just had to use the boat to reverse and just plane the fish up. Been fighting it now for well over 30 minutes. And of course, the longer the fight goes on, the more chance you've got of pulling the hooks. Probably lucky that we've got assist hooks. They're gonna hang in, assist hooks will hang in a lot longer than anything else, but as with everything, there's a, there's a limit. When you talk about micro jigging, well, this southern bluefin is no micro, it's a damn good fish. And when we finally get it in, you'll see just how small the lure been taking. These big tuna feed on very tiny bait and micro jigs like this lethal hunter from Asari are just what they're after. So let's get this guy in and just see how big a fish it is. We we're setting about completing our challenge and trying to put a few cold trout on, on board when I noticed this discrete water colour change and with curiosity myself and the crew started watching to see what would eventuate and when this thing came closer, what it turned out to be completely blew us away. Then down he goes, oh, what's that? Oh, shark, look at the size of it, man. There, that's a... That's a great white man. That is a seriously big animal, but I'm not that keen on the idea that he's just swimming around us. Yeah, I'm going over, eh? Right? Ready? You in the water? Yes. Holy f That is f insane! Oh, oh, oh. That's bigger than us, man. How big is that shark? That, that's that's, nah. that's, that's <laughs> longer than our boat and it's as wide as this. That's massive. I just saw a water colour change while I was fishing and thought we'll have a bit of a closer look. For a while we thought it was a whale and then we got closer and went, oh my goodness, it's not a whale. It's a shark and there's, there's another shark look, look, swimming with it. And that thing was not that small either, but that is a mammoth, mammoth animal. I think she just came to have a look at us, easily bigger than us. And one of the things you see when you're out fishing, that's why we do it. You just never know what you're going to see. That is very cool. Today I'm using a rod that's in the Venom range. It's a Venom crank bait. It's a PE two to four rod. Five foot five, so it's ideal for jigging. And it's matched up with a 4,000 size reel and the Mustad Wish braid, which is an eight carrier. Soft braid, it's visible green, which means I can see it really easily. So I know when the, the jig is hitting the bottom when I'm getting bites. It's a soft braid as well, which makes it ideal. Very little memory. So it floats well through the water and gives you that great contact. All in all, Balanced outfit, great medals, and the fish are biting. <laughs> he had to be there. <laughs> Big arch on the sander on the ledge. How neat is that? I saw it. Drop the jig on it, and clunk. A couple of little hops, he's loaded up. Classic trout bite, it might be proven wrong, but when you hop it and you pause that second and it gets clobbered, it's usually a trouty. That is a trouty. Oh. How good is that? Magnificent day, exploring, finding new ground. Having a lure which backs up exactly what you want to do, fish any situation, and fish just love them. Today I'm using the Asari range of jigs, and for a reason I absolutely love them. They come in a whole range of different sizes, shapes, and colors. 
And there's different varieties of jigs as well, so you can fish different retrieves, slower retrieves, faster retrieves, and produce a variety of actions, which means no matter what type of bite you find, no matter what species you chase, you're gonna be able to match it. Today, this guy's come up and he's coughed up. Bait fishing gives you a good idea. That's what they're down there reading. They're sitting in their little spot and waiting for unsuspecting prey like that to come, waltzing on past and make an easy meal out of it. And so getting a, a jig like that hopped into their zone is very much matching the hatch. It's giving them exactly what they want. So load a box with a variety of jigs. Go and hit water anywhere and you're gonna be having a whole lot of fun. Like the boys down south are having half as much fun as I'm having. <laughs>
In this case, our gift from down south, as we like to call it, which and is our great white the siding. I think it was nice of you guys to normally what we see down south, those big sharks, which I'm used to coming and seeing in southern waters, came up to pay us a visit. It was almost like, you could call it a little bit of a sign that I think the, the northerners might have just picked you on this one, but it's all right. There's another challenge just around the corner. Till next time. Till next time. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.